morning. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. We're at the Hyatt Regency. We're here for the Fiero Symposium. We're at the pre-conference. It's time to go get registered. I, I, for someone to save you. Yesterday we found out that he's going to be joined by uh, Mike Borello from Heroes Next Door. First of all, we're all here to kind of learn, uh, kind of to learn a lot about uh, training center design, and then once you understand that, start putting together what you think the needs are. And tell you what it is that you're actually buying, right? Am I dealing with, uh, in the instance of the Baltimore County Fire Department, am I dealing in an industrial waste site that used to be Bethlehem Steel Plant? Or are you going to do a water retention pond and then build a standalone pump house and pull all those things in? You know, fundamentally, what do we need? We can build it all today with the funding that we have. What is it going to be like? And then parsing back in terms of phases. We build a hole with dirt and then put everything on top of it. Yeah, one of the things that uh, we recently did, we worked with the uh, Navy out uh, of Philadelphia. You set up the fire. When do you call those in? And having it as that village with those streets that you talked about. So we've got some rooms that, like, you'll see we have the 90 degree stairs right off the street. The 90 degree stairs enter a burn room. So you're trying to get away again from that complacency mindset. And then what we ended up doing is if we crack the building open, there's multiple staircases that are integrated in a scissor stair configuration. Light cops, canine training, and the 100 yard range to, uh, for our snipers and stuff like that were invaluable. You know, we try to train at least twice a year to qualify. Thanks, guys. Uh, we're back here at Fierro's uh, Symposium. We, this is the first day, this is the kind of the pre-conference, and I got a chance to talk to Gary in between some sessions. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So uh, tell me a little bit what brought you down to Fierro's Symposium. Uh, really for today, uh, it was the session of the Sunday um, pre pre-conference session. Uh, the training center portion was really what kind of intrigued me. I'm sticking around for the next two days, um, but it was the Sunday session on public safety. Okay, what do you center. what do? You do? Are I'm an architect at uh, Mans Woodward Studios uh, outside of Baltimore, Maryland, a principal there, and do public safety design, specializing in uh, training centers. Okay, have you been to the symposium before? I have before, yes, uh, okay. a few times in the past. I've uh, been a couple of years, though. Okay, what do you expect to learn out of the symposiums when you come? Always looking for that uh, that next thing, uh, hearing everybody else's recent experience. Uh, we're constantly um, evolving in the training, the props, the different manufacturers. I'm um, just constantly looking for that, uh, the next newest thing, kind of piece. Okay, all right. Well, thank yep. you for joining us, and uh, I will keep an ear out and uh, see what we can learn. I thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. I appreciate all it. All right, take care. Thank you. So, we've got some examples of training structures, your classic uh, brick and mortar structures. There is that these structures now uh, need to be thoroughly evaluated and designed by a structural engineer. And another, another solution here, this was a uh, original class A burn building. And some of those causes, you're seeing over exertions, you're seeing strains, you're seeing exposure to fire products, balancing that with the short and long-term risks of injury during training. So those digital panels, they can simulate flames, and you can pre-wire your structure to be able to accept these digital panels. So let's talk about you know, ways you can uh, make your training clean.
Yeah, I'm Don, Don Collins. I'm the organizer of the Bureau of Fire Station Design Awards program. Okay. One of the things unique about the Bureau program is that we have the architects submit the submissions on a board, which is displayed throughout the, the entire uh, uh, symposium, and then they do a PowerPoint that shows things that are not on the board. Okay. That gives us more information about it. That goes together in a package that is sent to all the juries about three weeks ahead of this event. We'll show the slideshow and we'll, we'll discuss it and we'll spend about any, anywhere from eight to 12 hours in this room. Right, that's one of the things that when we you know heard about the, the pre-conference and the judging, we were kind of curious of how, how do you go about judging? What are the criteria that you look for? Is it just aesthetics? Is it function? Is it you know a place where they actually put the fire station within the city? Those are the kind of questions that we're kind of curious about. It's not so much the context of where they it's located. Sometimes we do get in the context of the immediate neighborhood. Firo came up with this idea: let's do something on fire station and try to create better fire stations for the benefit of the community and for the benefit of the people who use that station, be they volunteer. Or a career. One of the things that we also say is, is whatever it looks like, in my presentation the first thing tomorrow, I'll talk a little bit about style. Okay. But what we say is it still has to read as a fire station. We want the public to go by and say, that's my fire house. So we're just outside the judging room right now, or the war room is what I'm going to call it, because these guys are intense. They're going over every detail of every firehouse. They're doing a really, really good job. So let's go see if we can take a look. This is not fire station. To me, I'm pulled to the tower, almost where I'm like, okay, with it looks like there's too many entrances. There's no, there's no bell in it. Is this the standard where you're waiting for the ghost to peek over the top? Like kind of high angle training down the shaft mm -hmm. that's created. Why is this font three times bigger than the four plane? No, I put little diagrams down here to show what the functional things are. Green zone. The warm zone and the hot zone. 1.53 acres, 31,300 square feet, 7.7, 7, $7.8 million, $248 per square foot. Why did they give me a picture of AstroTurf? $5.9 million budget, $406 per square foot. No, what I'm saying is when you're talking about the, the I wouldn't do the, the paintings that, that you were talking about on this particular station. The, the, this, I, I would have liked to see, and I'm curious on that, is, is a better metal on that canopy? 1820 chairs at the table. Yeah, what was it? 19,000 square feet. But as far as aesthetics and you know pleasing and stuff like that, that's not what it was designed for. So historically, we've had study areas in our sleeping areas. It's not really meant for office. What I'm hearing is not. Hello, Pete. No, look at it. Look at the picture. Well, you're saying we can't judge it. We don't know how it works. It's private. It's not no, no, no. I'm just saying. Then don't know it. So take it. Or yes or no. So now that I come on out of one of the war rooms, we're going to go to the other war room. What this is all about is them getting prepared for the conference themselves. They're stuffing bags, they're getting goodies together, they're organizing all the vendors that are be coming in. So let's go see behind the scenes of what they're doing. Mind if we step in for just a moment? We want to get a little behind the scenes of this war room too. It's definitely a two-year planning process. We have our contracts booked for the hotel um, through next year, so we're looking at 2025, what our dates are going to be. We have to reevaluate the location, and then from there, it's a lot of marketing, word of mouth. We travel a lot. We attend uh, just about every fire service uh, conference. We were at Interschutz. I actually presented on behalf of Bureau at Interschutz. Um, and then FDIC, FRI, we're really out there. Um, we work closely with a lot of other not-for-profit organizations. So to get a word of mouth to you know just generate interest. And then we have a call for presentations, which we do both for our station design and our PP conference. We get lots of submissions and then the board meets and we kind of go through, determine what goes where, which presentations we're gonna accept. And then we come up with the tracks and we try to make sure that there's not competing interests so um, that's why we always encourage at least two people from every department to attend so that way you don't have to choose one session over another. In this you'll have all of the information about the event including speaker bios, um, how to get in touch with the speakers afterwards if they want to follow up um, and then we also have articles from Crackle Magazine, we have some NFPA resources in there that relate to health and safety and um, fire stations 
and we have information about Greenville, we have information about our organization, where we started from, kind of, um, and then other things that we do and other events that we plan. So you write this for every conference? Yes. Man, this is a lot of work behind the scenes. <laughs> So, going. <laughs> right, right. We just want to appreciate what you guys do behind the scenes too. So well, we are ex so excited to have you here. We love your channel, and we love seeing the fire stations, and we love seeing the inside. And we could talk about the fire stations for an entire week. Yeah, you know, I think I spent. Yeah, time. most of my mornings been in the other war room, you know, talking about the different fire stations and their process of evaluations and stuff like that. But I'm learning so much just from listening to the the experience that you have in that room. Most of the people in that room are firefighters and now architects, so there's years and years of experience. Just the two guys I was talking to, they are retired so they've yeah. you know they spent 20 25 30 years in the service so this isn't you know oh i just made this up as i go along you guys have the the backing behind it so yeah. and it's so important because so many people especially you know um, decision makers politicians city managers they don't understand the difference between building a municipal building and building something like a fire station which is so such a specialty niche area and our conference we get 35 more architects from across the country that are coming together that specifically, you know, they focus on fire station design. Under the merits, we're going to do Easley Fire Fire Department Headquarters, Station 51, and James Island PSD, Fire Station 1. Under the recognition, we'll do, we're going to have Arlington Fire Station 10, Fairmont Fire Department Station 2, Medic Mecklenburg EMS Agency, and finally we're going to have WSP Amalgamated Station 9, Winnipeg, Canada. 15 pages of a spreadsheet that lays out what that's going to do. And now every architectural firm has that process down a little, a little different. What is programming? Programming is a research and decision-making process that identifies the scope of work to be designed. My name is Mike, one of the uh, photographers here for today from Hi, Heroes Next Door. I still notice your uh, firefighter patches. You guys building a firehouse? Looking at doing it yeah, yes. within the next couple of years, kind of thing. Or? I mean, that's the whole Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> we're in the beginning stages right now. Okay. Yeah. How do you like the conference so far? Good. Good. Yeah. We were here last year as well. It was pretty good. Okay. Are you learning new things this time versus last we're time? We're hoping to. Yeah, okay. Sure. Do you guys have an architect already, or you look? Because there's architects here. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've okay. contact with a few of them from yeah. last year as well. So. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for uh, coming down here. And if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. What do you think of Fierro's whole setup and how's it going today? It's, it's pretty good. It's, um, I didn't know what to expect. Right. I'm kind of new on the job in general, so this is my first convention in general. But okay. seeing fire departments from all over the country come together and kind of like learn, I really like that that concept. So right, right. It's, it's doing a lot of good. There's a lot of information in a short amount of time. <laughs> so. Uh, Fierro is doing a fantastic job. I mean, here, they've been here before in Greenville, so you know they've had this convention a couple of times. Okay, yeah, this is. I've been here for two months. Okay. So. Okay. I'm kind of uh, still learning all the ropes and stuff. Right. Fierro, right. this conference particularly started in 2000, and so we were able to first year to attend in 2000 
And then since then, we've been invited to speak at each one of those since then. You can start getting good information out of architects before you start paying them fee. You've already heard discussed how if you can involve them earlier, you can avoid a lot of the pitfalls and mistakes that you might make without them. One of the things that the architect can help you with is assistance in the establishing the project delivery method. Um, why are they so expensive? This is another one that you're going to hear a lot of people talk about why they're so expensive. Um, but I'm going to give my opinions um, in brief. Uh, and the things that we found that, that really resonate with community. One of the things that you're going to need to do is convince your public that your station probably isn't good right now and you need to make some changes. We heard one of the presenters earlier this morning talk about uh, first phase planning. The ideal situation is to have one acre for every 5,000 square feet of program area you have. That sounds really nice, um, but it's not always a, a reality. Ultimately, you know, we just want communities to be safer. We'll get into how we monitor and, and censor uh, those, different, um, those different areas for contaminants. Is this your first time here? This is my first time here. Okay. What do you, what did you bring to the show? Okay. Some samples of our new ready decon, which we have got, excuse me, we have our laundry detergent, our multi-surface cleaner, as well as our skin cleanser. So we started out with the steel storage solution safety solution. So right. This is our, our home baby. Traditional American fire helmet versus the, you know, London kind. Right. Do you even do the kind of London kind of helmets or? Okay. So we have a variety, but that is always the debate of traditional or the lighter style or just switching. Right. Change is hard, right? Okay. Sometimes. Right. I was really interested to see what's changed this year or last year. Okay. I know it's a very short time. It looks like the cost per square foot is dramatic. Last year we were going to have a number of like $400 a square foot. Okay. Yeah. The other thing is, um, I'm noticing some follow on the software side of presentation on the other end of bricks and mortar. Right. Or, uh, how do we build a kind of gentler fire station that people can yeah. find as a new cave of Westman? Yeah. Institutions of four block walls and very harsh life. So we're here actually representing Fiero because we're good, kind of getting behind the scenes and stuff like that. Have you, have you ever been here before? It, yeah. Seventh time, I can't remember. Seventh, wow, okay. Yeah, I really liked your design. You know, they're doing firehouses. As you notice, I'm a paramedic first, fireman second. So when your house came up, I was like, that's pretty special. So, you know, it, it, can you tell me how you came about putting that all together? Not a partnership, but a manufacturer. Oh, okay. Manufacturer. Was the addition, okay. Yeah, yeah they actually had tracks that came into the building and everything too, so. Yeah. It was a pretty um, incredible project. We went through a lot of planning with them. Even though I didn't get a vote, I pushed for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, one of the things that I really enjoyed about it, it, it and that wasn't a firehouse. You've done a lot of firehouses, a lot of beautiful firehouses. It's a unique building because it was already pre-existing, but the flow, the innovation of the flow of keeping an ambulance into service. For me, that's very difficult. You know, I'm a paramedic, I ride in a truck all the time. Uh, you know, keeping your trucks clean, keeping it restocked and all that kind of stuff. You guys really incorporate it into the entire facility, not just a specific building. So, you know, if I'm on a call, I have to, you know, have a bad call, or it's raining, dirty, whatever, I can go in, get it washed, get it fueled. The maintenance shed's right there. If I need to pick up a new mirror because I clipped the mailbox, you can do that. <laughs> drive in, you know, get your restock, and then drive out. I'm like, this is absolutely brilliant.
we're walking around the exhibit hall. Uh, I met Greg the other day. We just kind of chatting a little bit. I just want to ask you a couple of questions so we can, let, you know, let our audience know. How many times have you been at the Fiero conferences? Well, we've been at the Fiero conference for a decade or more, but I, I personally, this is my first year. Okay. What brings you to these kind of conferences? Uh, mostly networking, uh, but we, we also like to show off our, our, uh, our equipment and, and talk to mostly just talk to firefighters. Today, uh, I've only brought our demonstrator for our, uh, our pro nozzle, so we are. Uh, we, we provide two different types of equipment. We provide uh, source capture. This is our hose system that connects directly to fire trucks. And we also provide our air hot line, which is air filtration. Okay, okay. Yeah, definitely important stuff for uh, preventing cancer and keeping us all healthy. So yeah, right thank on. you for supporting Fiero and coming to these conferences. It's definitely something that we need. We appreciate it. So, thank you. All right, appreciate it. Our company's been involved prior to that, but this is uh, my personal third year. Okay. And, uh, and I've been speaking on the Sunday session, okay. which is all about the training right. element. And uh, yeah, it's been really good. Have you been getting a lot of good responses from yeah, the customers? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, especially um, working and getting to know some of the different architects. Uh, uh, many of them I've, I've corresponded with or spoken to over the phone. And, and different uh, phone calls or whatever, but getting to actually go, oh, you're so and so, and to see a right, put a friendly see, face yeah, with the voice, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Nice. So, what is your product? What do you bring in? So, so we are uh, we're all about live fire training and particularly gas fuel, okay, indoor, outdoor, um, and we have all kinds of solutions. We have uh, you know your your uh, your brick and mortar large structure facilities, okay. We also put the same technology into uh, metal prefabricated buildings. Okay. Um, and then we also have products for outdoor. Uh, so whether it be uh, power fires or petrochemical scenarios. Right. Um, and then we also have uh, mobile solutions. Yep. So if you're really down, you need some flexibility, you've got less budget. Um, We've come up with a line of, of mobile trainers. So you actually are offering, you know, the burn house that we normally tradition. Right. Uh, environmentally friendly. Um, and it's very speedy. So training throughput is, is real fast. Very quick setup. Turn it on. Ready to go. Send your firefighters in. No, no real cleanup. Right. Send, send, them, send them back. So all that hay and straw or uh, pallets, you don't yeah, even have to worry about. It's more switch on, switch off. Right. Um, lots of integrated data collection, which is, is nice. Um, so if, if there's any ever a question as to uh, who's been trained, when they were trained, what did they experience, what was the highest levels of temperatures that they were in, um, all that data is collected and assigned to the... To it the sounds like it's a big safety and, factor then, too. It, it is. It yes. Is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, we've, we've, done, uh, we've done the largest facilities in the world right down to the absolute smallest. So we have solutions, you know, that run the whole gamut. All right, well, I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, it's definitely something we need yeah. in the fire service. Yeah. And Firo is yeah. good, good to have you here. So yeah, thank, you. thank thank you, you for joining us. So you're one of the presenters also. Yes, I'm, I'm presenting on two topics here to this today, in fact. Okay. One is how to design a proper decon laundry. Okay. And the other is your old fire station, should you renovate it or tear it down? Oh, here's a good one. In, in this instance, This part of the building is from 1936, this is from 1966, and this is from 2021. Wow, it looks all together. That's the goal. Yeah. That is so critical to our approach to these things because, oh, well, here's another one. This is Augusta, Maine, 1926, and the addition. And when we got the original drawings of it, it showed the hay mow, the manure pit, the coal bin. Right, right. And, um, and there's a lot of tricks when you do this because there's this thing called the International Existing Building Code. And the these are called essential facilities. So structurally, they have to be brought up to the current standard for lateral forces restraint. Right. Because the idea is these have to be the last thing standing. Okay. So when you get an old building, that becomes problematic. And many times the trick is to in, in this case, you'll see all the heavy apparatuses in a new building, and there's a rubber membrane between the new building and the existing building. Okay. And all that's in the existing building are second-due vehicles, which we're able to pass off as not essential. Right. 
And uh, sometimes, sometimes we have to stretch that story a little more than other times. <laughs> but, but sometimes what happens is the old bay becomes living space. And so from the point of view of the code, it's not considered essential anymore. Okay. What's essential means you can get the truck out and go fight a fire and come back and outfit it again and go back out. Right. So that has to be the thing that works when nothing else works. I think one of the other challenges that you might have is some of these buildings that are the, you know, 1906 kind of buildings, they can be historical monuments they that are. you want to preserve. Absolutely. So in, in those instances, well, as in this case, you know, it's still here. And we've got others that we've done like that. You can't tell in this one, but around the corner over here is the 1926 original administration building. And it was so advanced for the time. It had uh, big batteries in the basement, 1926. It had an electric fire chief's truck. It had all that kind of stuff. It's Newton, Massachusetts, so okay. they're very forward thinking. And uh, <clears throat> we had to make it meet you know, modern needs. And again, this is one where there's a two independent structures with a rubber expansion joint, is okay. a technical term, between yeah. the two. Yeah. So you, your firm basically uh, specializes in the renovations, or do you do new construction also? M more of our work is new, but I've been doing renovations, you ready for this? Since 1969. Wow. Yeah. So you're an expert in this. In I've subject. done many. I've done hundreds. Right. Well, thank you for attending the conference. Hopefully, well, you're getting you. a pretty good response. We I appreciate am. everything that you're doing for Fiero. Fiero is very near and dear to my heart. And what they do is so important because the fire service needs to know how to do a proper building. Local architects don't know. You know, local architects are like uh, going to a general practitioner which you wouldn't do for a knee replacement. Right. You'd go to somebody, that's what they do. And Fiero makes it possible for that to happen. You're starting to collaborate, not just between architects, but you're, the firefighters are coming here, the chiefs. The, oh, absolutely. The, and they're coming to, to learn the mix because all too often we kind of stick in our own bubble. We stick in our own sandbox that, we use, sure. that we're used to. But by bringing you together in a convention like this, really can you know expand the horizons of what you're capable of. The, the firefighters, come away with actionable information. They may not deal with an architect who's done one of these before. Right. And, and you know, and they know how to fight fires and they know what they, in the general sense, want to accomplish. But the little points are the things that either make it work well or not. And, and they shouldn't you. be stuck with a irritations. The building should support them in everything they do. end of the conference here, but I wanted to catch up with J.R. King. And where are you from? Anderson, South Carolina. Okay, what brought you to the conference? Uh, we're anticipating uh, building our fourth station. We started watching uh, some YouTube videos on different stations, how they were built. The conversation got brought up about letting the actual frontline personnel have a say in uh, how the station is designed. And we're lucky to have a really supportive chief. So he offered to send uh, me to this conference. So it's important to have a bunch of people involved in the development of a firehouse, rather than just a chief or just an administration. You're saying that you know you want to make sure that you're involving frontline firefighters, EMS personnel, chiefs, everybody involved. Absolutely, we're the ones living in it, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So we're having to live there, sleep there, respond to calls from there cook there. Right, so. right. Just like you want to design your own house, you yeah. want to, you're, you're there half of your life, anyways, Absolutely. right? The biggest takeaway is, I guess coming into it, I didn't know all of the options, and that's, that's been a big thing that I'm going to try to take back, is I got a bag full of brochures and pamphlets and everything else, so I can lay out all the options on the table, and we can kind of compare side by side and try to see what's best for our department. Yeah, yeah. You know, this was my first time at the conference here, too, and the one thing that I noticed is, you, you know, like you said, the amount of options, but I had no idea we were even yeah. out there. So 
you know it's pretty cool now do you plan on building the station within the next year or uh we're not sure when the start of construction is going to be yet so okay that's still kind of up in the air okay so you're looking forward to maybe even next year's conference possibly yeah yeah because everything changes right yeah all right well thank you for taking the time to right. meet with us I appreciate you. you. Keep up the good work. The conference is all finished up. However, we're getting ready to do a tour of at least four different fire stations throughout uh, Greenville, South Carolina area. Best it just started to fill up. Their old station one is a two-story station. There's a big building there called the Classic Center. It's their convention center and concert hall. And it's built around on the station two. And they also use the station two as the ticket office for the Classic Center. The wooden doors are still there. Mike Pry with DP3 Architects. Uh, welcome to the Reedville uh, Area Fire District, Willow Creek Station. Uh, beside me is Chief Patrick Evitt. Uh, he's been here. He can give you a little overview about the department, what they cover, and what this department specifically serves, and then we can walk through the, the station itself. Most of the building is the central portion of the apparatus base is all pre-engineered construction. Uh, the two side wings are actually wood construction uh, due to cost, and it's just the skin to make it look like the main uh, pre-engineered building. So we are in the process of doing a tour with Fiero. They set up a whole conference talking about firehouses and how to build them and things like that. You are part of what fire company? Uh, I work for Reba Fire Department, but we're at our substation in Willow Creek. Okay. How long has the station been out? Uh, we opened October 26th of 2021. Okay. How do you like it? I absolutely love it. Yeah. As soon as they told us that where they were opening one, I was on the first list to want to come down here. What was your favorite feature of this house? Um, honestly, it's just being so far out from everything. I, I'm more of a fan of what we call John Wayne and stuff. Okay. I like, I like running stuff with just my partner and stuff. And a lot of times if we get out here, it's five to ten minutes response time for anybody else after we've already been on scene. Right, right. So you're getting the initial knockdown and stuff like yes, that. Sir. Yeah, awesome. Well, I thank you for your service. you got a very beautiful house here. Very nice to meet you. I thank you for inviting us out. No problem. Station Medic 25. That's okay. so right here. How do you like the new station? Oh, I love it. It's yeah. very, very, very nice. Yeah. Got, got everything, everything we need. Just getting up the bus for our fourth and final uh, Station Cribs episode here. The BMW is a fire chief car, huh? Yep, he's had them ever since BMW's been here. Man.
know these aren't our typical station cribs as we walk around and talk about things, but I just want to say that this house was amazing. I did a quick walk around. You guys are going to be able to see it. Um, there are so many things in here. It, it's so hard to even describe of how well thought out this house was. Uh, I want to thank uh, Fiero for inviting us in and uh, giving us these tours, looking at these new houses. Um, but before we end, I need you to do me a favor. Hit subscribe, hit notification, uh, hit the like button when you like these so we can keep building more. We're trying to hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. With your guys' help, we can do that. We'll see you again next week. I am looking for a Diet Coke. I am a Diet Coke addict and I am starting to fiend a little bit. <laughs> Pepsi's not, I just, Diet Coke yes. is, I'm a fiend. Oh, Pepsi. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. If there's a Pepsi product, I'll go with Mountain Dew.